Buenos días. Uh, I think this guy has a very clear vision about where I want to go. Isn't it? You believe it? Congratulations. Thank you very much for your outstanding time. In terms of uh, directions, uh, I'm delighted to be here with some proof on the union uh, Jeff. Uh, I, uh, I think that uh, many people have been, uh, have been thinking about how is the world is an inside the system. I think one thing that I would notice is that uh, we have put a lot of attention for many years on, on the branding. Uh, I remember uh, 10 years ago, uh, people were considering that uh, Katia was owned by IBM. Not long ago, uh, I was visiting customers and they were saying, well, how do you work with IBM? Uh, what do you do for uh, your Katia software? I said, this is, this is mine. Uh, a few uh, two years ago, I was in an executive conference uh, meeting with a bunch of CEOs, and, uh, and we were discussing about uh, virtualization, what happened to the manufacturing world. And uh, uh, as we were talking about that, uh, we were talking about different customers. And, and one of the CEO came to my uh, to me at the break and said, "Well, uh, I know you are doing a lot, a lot of software. You know, I, I apologize. I'm not a customer. I'm using SolidWorks." <laughs> so I said, "Let me tell you something. <laughs> it's a big secret in the industry." Uh, so. Uh, what I, what I want to say is that uh, uh, DASO system, uh, as you know, we have uh, not been using the name DASO system for products. Because DASO is a family name. And we are a family owned company. Which I think those days is a quite powerful value. Because in the software industry, many acquisitions are done not really in the interest of the customer. They are done for uh, monopoly positions, they are done for different kind of marketing, market shares, but not necessarily in the customer's interest. I believe that uh, what uh, is important for us is to have very long-term commitment uh, and to build a sustainable set of products and technology it starts with stable shareholders. And I think it's very good to have very stable shareholders. We are not subject to, to uh, take over. We control our stock. While it's uh, coded in the market, we control by about 52%. And we have 65% of the vote. So we have a plan for long term. So that's one, one parameter which I think is uh, very essential. And the reason why I start there is uh, if you think about the journey with SolidWorks, uh, you know, with time people forget. But uh, John and I, as um, Jeff was, was speaking about, how John Yoshik uh, thought and created uh, with, uh, with Steam SolidWorks two years ago. When John and I, in, uh, at the end of, uh, of 1996, initiated our discussion, I discovered uh, a startup company. We talked for six months. Every month I was taking a plane from Paris to Boston, taking some bagels with uh, John at the breakfast, spending two hours with him. And it took me six months to convince him that it was about to make a key decision between doing an IPO, which is what he was dreaming of, public offering, introducing so it works on the, on the financial market. It's, IPO is a financial target, so it was about you know getting some capital from the, from the market. Or joining someone else. And the or was not even a possibility at the beginning when I met with him in uh, December 1996. And as you know, by July 1997, even years ago, uh, we acquired 
that's a system of why uh, SolidWorks. At that time, it was a startup company. It was about uh, 50 people or 60 people, 9 million in revenue, losing money. And we bought the company for 320 million US dollars. So it was a big bet. So I think the proof of this is it was a big bet because 320 million for 9 million revenue at that time, and even today, it's a lot of money. And for John, it was a big decision to make. It was a decision between going on the loan, building his up this, this, this journey, or joining us. And there was a lot of questions. Some of you were publishing papers about when would that turn out do a massive all of that, and uh, how about culture, how about things. We are uh, now uh, 11 years after. Uh, the SolidWorks community is about close to be about 1 million user community, so uh, it's, it's an amazing number. <coughs> and uh, when you think about it, and if I link the two things I just shared with you, uh, a few months ago, John, uh, the two John, John Yoshkid, John McKinney, and a few of us were talking about what if, what would happen if. We all came to the conclusion that would SolidWorks have been introduced on the market in that year of 1997, so before the 2000 bubble. We believe that some of the existing competitors, probably not us, but probably the neighbor of SolidWorks nearby Boston would have probably acquired the company on the financial market and probably kicked it because it was a big issue for them. That's why I say some acquisitions are in the customer interest, some acquisitions are not. And uh, I, did, I think today I can claim that we have been acting for the customer's interest. And there is no way why we shouldn't continue to do that. We have been acting on building up, on developing, on coaching a startup company to grow with a powerful ACL network, create cool products, have the passion for your customers, on deliver great functions great value for the money, and that's the success story of SolidWorks. That's why it's becoming a lot mark. But if you look at the DNA <coughs> of that, I think for many of the things we have been doing in that system, we have acted the same way. You have communities who are catalogers. They do love it. And uh, I think that's where we want to go for that sort of system. A family name, long-term commitment, and capacity to develop world-class love marks. We did that in four steps for SolidWorks. There was the step of creation, there was a step of developing the startup to become a global company. Uh, the start, we call it the startup two. When chapter one, we even wrote it. This was John. Chapter 2, we wrote it with the team, the post-acquisition, and then became a new challenge of becoming a global, uh, a global distribution machine. That was chapter 3 with uh, John McIlhenny. And uh, when Jeff took over a year ago, was it a year ago? A year ago, uh, we made a decision that uh, this was not about expanding what has been done, it was about creating the next, the next step to reach seven, 7 million user community, to reach half a billion and a billion in revenue, and to really provide this, this cool experience that uh, so many of these designers in the world are looking for. So, it was not orchestrated by accident. It was prepared and planned. 